has your guitar save. Replacing strings on an acoustic guitar. <clears throat> so, before we begin, I'll tell you a little bit about kind of what I'm doing here. You want to have the guitar set up on some towels or something like that. So one, it doesn't ruin your furniture, and two, so that your instrument is doesn't get harmed or knocked around and that sort of thing. You don't want to have the towels like this. Uh, or pillows or whatever you're using, you kind of want to have them supporting the neck a little bit and also that so that when you lean on it, um, you're not bearing down on the instrument, um, especially the, the neck here, okay? Um, I have a few tools that I'm using here today for changing strings, however, you don't have to have these and when I first started changing strings uh, when I was a kid, I, I didn't have any of this stuff. So, of course, you need new strings, and today I'm using uh, the Dario Phosphor Bronze, but you can use anything, Martin or, you know, uh, elixirs, you know, whatever you like. Um, like a lot of questions about strings, I don't have a particular favorite. Um, I use different kinds all the time. So, this right here is uh, lemon oil. Bought this sometime in the 80s, and I still have some left. So. Um, we're going to be using that for the fingerboard. It uh, conditions the, the fingerboard, it keeps it um, uh, hydrated so it doesn't crack and that sort of thing. Um, this is guitar polish and this will be used for the body of the guitar. This is Big Ben's Nut Sauce. Yes, Big Ben's Nut Sauce. And this is typically used for electrics, but I use it on acoustic sometimes too. Right here, you put it uh, right underneath the string at the nut. That stuff's awesome. This right here is a peg winder and it use, is used to twist your strings to make it a lot quicker when you're tuning them up, bringing them up. This right here, uh, wire clippers, we're gonna use that to clip the strings. And this right here is a contact tuner. Um, we'll put it right there when we're tuning the strings, we'll use that. Uh, and this particular tuner allows me to talk, sing, play drums or whatever I wanna do while I'm tuning the guitar. Um, okay, so without further ado, we're going to jump into this. Okay, so we're going to clip the strings here. You can um, you can tune these down just a little bit. I like to do this so I bring some of the tension off of the strings so that when I do use the wire cutters, when I do use the wire cutters, it's not so... Um, there's not so much tension there that it's dangerous, if you will. It's not fun to get snapped in the eyes by these, or in the eye, or any body, other body part for that matter. So there you go. Ready to go. Okay, so this part right here on a peg winder, for doing acoustic guitars here, this little guy right here fits underneath these pegs and it helps you to pull the string out. So basically, it goes like this. You take it, you kind of wedge it under there, and bam, string comes out. Um, don't force it, just kind of wedge it under there. It's plastic, and these are either gonna be plastic, wood, or bone. And then the string just comes out of there. So it's the tension that keeps them in there. Sometimes you'll get a one that's a problem child like this. Okay, so you can, so right here, I've, I've had this problem before. You can take this, go into the guitar, because this peg is pushing right into the center of the, the body here, and you can just kind of counter it from the back and push it up like that. So I do that sometimes if I have a real problem with one. This particular acoustic guitar is a, is a acoustic electric and so it has battery in it I test it with my tongue how does he do that like that and if it hurts <laughs> then then that means the battery is good do that one more time don't, don't tase me bro <laughs> so um, I do that and and honestly this one I don't use out to play live anyhow so I don't care if the battery's old in it but it's not too old so um, and then you put that back in there, and then that's for the pickup again. You may not have that in your guitar. Okay, so what do we do with this mess here? Um, just unwind these. Make sure you don't poke your eye out. 
not cool. Okay, and so these, <clears throat> just kind of unwind these. Then, now on this particular one, there's a knot in it, and we'll talk about that when I'm, when we're putting the strings on. Um, this high E string, I'll put a knot in. And so, you want to be careful with this. Now, this is an old beater guitar. This is, I've had this guitar for years, but I'm kind of manhandling it here. You don't want to go chopping away at your instrument like I just did, especially if you have a nice guitar. So um, I usually do this bit right here, just put them in a, just tie them in a knot like that, then they're not floating around everywhere. My cats love those. Okay, so now we got the instrument ready to, you know, ready to put something on, you can, you can or put our strings on. You can see all the dust here, just clean all that off with either a duster or what have you. Um, you can use, like I say, guitar polish. I kind of don't like using it, and I don't know if this is just, I think this is really old, so I don't know. I, I, I won't be using that today. Um, sometimes you can just use water because it doesn't leave a residue on the guitar, so I like to do that. And plus, I just don't clean my guitar as much. Um, this is lemon oil. We're going to use this lemon oil for the fretboard. And um, you can see uh, on now on, on some guitars, you can see um, like grime on, in here. You can either clean that off, you know, kind of scour it off, if you will, or you can do what I do and just um, keep playing. And you can actually see on this guitar where the frets are, are pretty worn because I played the poo out of this guitar. So, but you do want to use this lemon oil, and uh, this is how we're going to do that. About every two frets or so. This gives a nice sound. I like that sound. I like that. As you get to the top here, you can do less. Okay, so there you go. You got that in the fretboard, and that just conditions the fretboard, keeps it from cracking and that sort of thing. Um, A lot of people will wipe this off with like a, you know, a paper towel or a piece of toilet paper or tissue or something like that. I don't. I leave it in there and by the time we get the strings on, that will soak in there. So I don't like to wipe the excess off. I like, I like to leave that there. Okay, so now we're ready to put the strings on. A um, couple things that I like to do first is I like to line up the holes of the... Um, of the tuners, I like to have them pointing straight to the string, um, the place where the string rests, the, the slot, if you will, and so just point them straight towards that. So this one's going to go in here, and um, and so on. I'm pointing that guy right towards this one. This guy's going to get pointed towards there. It's lined up already. This guy's going to go to there. And this guy is going to go to here. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm noticing this peg here is really loose. So um, it needs to be tightened. And you may notice on your acoustic guitar there'll be a screw right in here in the center of that peg. And so we're going to use a screwdriver to tighten that up. So that's what they look like when they're all squared up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Cool. So I'm going to tighten this one. This is just too loose. You shouldn't be able to just spin it like that with your finger. It should be more stiff like that. So um, this is too loose and this helps keep your guitar in tune as well. So now that's a little too much. Let's back it off a little bit. So just kind of what's logical, you know. You'll feel a good medium feel there. Okay, um, don't think, I mean, just use your logic, you know, with this sort of thing. It's like, obviously, if it feels too tight and you're having a real hard time doing it, it's too tight. If it's all spinning around on you, it's too loose. Um, 
Okay, so there you go. So now that we got those all lined up, you get your, uh, like I say on the D'Addario's here, you have the, um, the numbers, so the string, and then you have the colors. And so we're going to use that today to tell where we're going to put our strings. Um, after a while, of course, you get good at this and you just you can just feel them. So um, I said earlier that I always look at these. You can just feel the gauge of the string. So like this is the sixth string. This is the fifth. This is going to be the fourth, the third. So there we go. I'm going to set these aside. And I prefer to start with the thick string first. I have these backwards like that. Okay, so just take them like this. Goes like this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the ball end. This is what they call the ball end. And you're gonna take that part and put it into the hole of the guitar. And you're gonna put it in there, um, not just a teeny bit, but you know maybe an inch or two. And then followed by this peg, which has a little um, notch on it, and just put the string right in there. Like that. Now, what you do is you press down on that peg, pull on your string a little bit until the two, until it catches. Now, if you're pulling straight up, there's a chance that it may come out. In this case, it's not, so that's good. But basically, the pulling of the string keeps that guy in place. Okay. So now that we have that, I'm going to come over here. Put the string right in there. It's nice and straight already. And what we're going to do is, even though that's the only the, the length of the string that we need, I'm actually going to give it a little bit more. So over here, I'm going to pull a little bit of slack and then kink it right here. This. Kind of make a little hurricane, if you will, kind of twist it like this. Here's why. We want slack in it because we want to get a few different, a few wines on the peg itself, meaning we don't want it to be just one time. We want it to go down one or two times. You want it to be going straight here, but yet you want there to be tension over here. Okay? So then take your string winder, or you can do this by hand. And here's the deal. You want all the strings being as straight as possible to the peg. Some people will wrap the string around this way. Wrong. Okay? Because then you got them fighting with the other pegs. It needs to always be around this side, the inside. So it goes on the inside like this. And these strings will wind inside towards the nut like that. Okay? So that's what we're doing here. We're not winding it the other way. So I'm going to do this. If I'm holding it tight, then this should be cool here. Now you always want the wind to go underneath that bit right there. Never on top, never over it, but just underneath. Okay. So now, and use your, use your common sense here. If you feel this thing getting real tight, you need to hold off. So we just want it basic. Okay. So we just want that basic deal like that.